Uh, this is going to be a faster paced session. We've got lightning talks. they are five minutes plus two minutes of questions. So queue up right away as the talks are ending for those questions. I have uh, informed at least 80% of the speakers that I will tackle them at five minutes and one second. And I'm not joking around. So our first speaker from UW, from Jay Shundari's lab, is uh, Troy McDermott. Troy. All right. OK, so thanks for that introduction. Again, so my name is Troy McDermott. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in Jay Shindari's lab at the University of Washington. And I'm going to be telling you about our work to identify enhancers to rescue haploid sufficiency in neurodevelopmental disorders via a CRISPR AQTL approach. And then before I get started, I just want to acknowledge the two graduate students I've been working with most closely on this project, Flo Chardon, who's a graduate student in our group, and Nick Page, who's a graduate student in Adava Hutiv's lab at UCSF. And they've both just been a great team to spearhead this project with. OK, so this project is a bit different than the other ones you've heard about today. It's focused on gene regulation and gene therapy, and in particular, a form of gene therapy called cis regulation therapy. And so cis regulation therapy targets CRISPR-A to promoters and enhancers of risk genes to increase expression of the remaining wild type copy in order to compensate for loss of the other allele. Now, there's some promising initial studies that suggest CRT has benefits over traditional gene therapy, but the challenge is, in order for CRT to work, we need to know where all of the enhancers and promoters are and find guide RNAs that target them. And so that's where this project comes in. So our lab develops technologies in, for high-throughput functional genomics. And in 2019, we described a scalable method to identify enhancers called CRISPR-QTL screening. And so how this works is first, candidate regulatory elements are identified on the basis of biochemical marks. These are things like DNA accessibility. We then design a library of guide RNAs to target these regulatory elements and introduce them in multiplex to a cell line expressing CRISPR machinery. So that means there's multiple perturbations per cell. Then we do a ton of single cell RNA sequencing. And so because we measure the expression of every gene in every cell, including the guide RNA, we can computationally partition cells into cells with the given guide RNA versus those without, and then test for changes in expression of every gene within a million base pairs upstream or downstream of that gene, right? So we can find the genes that these regulatory elements control. So when this method was first described, it was only done for CRISPR-I, so to inhibiting these enhancers to find uh, the genes they regulate. And so what we wanted to do here was develop a CRISPR-A form of this method so we could find enhancers and promoters capable of upregulating our target genes. And that's what I'm going to tell you about today, is this pilot looking at CRISPR-A QTL screening in K562 cells, which is just the cell line where this was initially developed. So what we did was we designed a library of guide RNAs targeting promoters and enhancers of neurodevelopmental disorder risk genes. We then introduced that into two separate cell lines expressing CRISPR-A machinery. And then we ran a bunch of single cell RNA sequencing, again with the expectation that we should see higher expression in our targeting cells compared to cells with a non-targeting control guide. OK, and so then just in the interest of time, I'm going to show all of our results aggregated. And so to illustrate our results, here I'm showing a quantile quantile plot where we have our observed p-values along the y-axis versus our expected p-values along the x-axis. And what you can see is that there's a clear excess of highly significant results for our targeting guide RNAs, suggesting that CRISPR-AQTL scores are stronger, the assay did indeed work, and that we're not just capturing noise. Okay, so that was for both promoters and enhancers at the same time, but what we wanted to see was would this method work if we just targeted enhancers, because that wasn't clear at the outset of this work. And so here I'm showing a volcano plot looking at just enhancer targeting guide RNAs, and what you can see is that indeed, this method does cause upregulation when just targeting enhancers, even in cases where the gene was already highly expressed, suggesting we can capture target gene upregulation, which bodes well for our rescue studies. And then on the right is just one example we're particularly excited about, where we have two separate guide RNAs targeting the same enhancer for ANXA1, and they both yield nearly identical upregulation. OK, and then this is just one example to show you what you can do with this type of data when you map it to a locus. So here I'm showing one high-confidence neurodevelopmental disorder risk gene, ANC2. Now, ANC2 has a very complicated isoform structure. It has multiple different promoters. I'm only showing five here. And what you can see is that the two strongest guide RNAs for ANC2 both target the same promoter. And this is not the promoter that's prioritized by biochemical marks like H3K27 acetylation or accessibility. Right? So this just gives you an example of how you can prioritize your search space to these actual functional regulatory elements for our in vivo rescue efforts, or if we wanted to look at the effects of things like non-coding variants. OK, and then five minutes is not a lot of time. So we have a lot more analyses. I'll be around the meeting if you're interested in this project. We've looked at how specific our guide RNAs are, different efforts mapping them to areas in the genome, 
as well as now current efforts to transfer this whole screening framework to iPSC-derived neurons and scaling it to a list of all regulatory elements controlling all neurodevelopment disorder risk genes. Again, with that, I'd just like to say thank you to all the members of the Shinduri Lab, in particular Jay, as well as the Ahutiv Lab, the Street Labs, our other collaborators at UCSF, and our funding bodies, in particular the Banting Postdoctoral Fellowships for this work, as well as the Wheel Neuro Hub. Thank you. This is very exciting, I, um, I, like the, the, the targeting aspect, right? But I guess, but the full changes you see look pretty small. Mm. I was wondering, what do you think needs to be done to up the full change once you've identified um, kind of a, 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 an effective target site? Yeah, so that's a great question. So uh, the first aspect of that is this is from single cell sequencing data, which is quite sparse. So if we did a bulk assay targeted to that, we should have more power. Also, we could then do a tiling across that regulatory element. Once we know that that regulatory element is important, we could do a lot of different guide RNAs to find more effective ones or try more effective forms of CRISPR in machinery as well. for being a timely, <laughs> timely and great talk.